tonight. Uh, husband just got home from work, so we were about to have a uh, spin with babies at Owine. But uh, luckily he did just get here, so uh, we have wine instead of gin and uh, no babies. So I'll actually be able to uh, do a better job. <laughs> so I'm a little bit, you know, I'm trying not to spill said wine. So uh, cheers with your tea or whatever you got. And um, yeah, that is the uh, best red wine that Trader Joe's has to offer. It is like $3.52. It's pretty stellar. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it is really good wine. Uh, it's dangerously cheap, so if you have a Trader Joe's, I recommend it. But um, I'm a little in between spinning stuff, and I didn't want to show you. I'm still working on the silk uh, as my personal project, but I'm a little in between. Um, I'm waiting on some fiber to get dyed. It's been so uh, cold and nasty here that uh, all the fiber dyeing is a little slower in the drying process than we would like it to be. So even though I've got uh, like tons of stuff to do for... Um, new collection coming out in February and then wholesale orders and I'm kind of like sitting here <laughs> like a lot to do and nothing just too much to spend at the moment so I am blending things let me try to adjust the camera okay this is always fun trying to adjust the camera okay so I usually use my uh get my Hand straight here. I normally use a drum carter, but for this uh, collection, is uh, the one coming out in February is going to be called Chrysalis and Cocoon. I wanted to do because uh, it's all about like New Year's, and I'm doing like a whole uh, butterfly cocoon slash gemstone action for New Year's, and I wanted to do some roll eggs. Then I just made these because um, they reminded me of butterfly cocoons. So this, I figured I would kind of give y'all, instead of using the drum carter and making the art bats, um, I was going to make some roll eggs, which uh, these guys, how much do they weigh? They weigh, I have my little scale here, roughly 0.4 ounces each. And like I said, they look like little cocoons. They can also be stored. You'll see them kind of rolled up like, like so. But anyhow, so uh, this is, you may have seen my other video on this channel called How to Make Your Own Blending Board. And so uh, here it is. It is my uh, homemade folds in half kind of ghetto blending board. But I love it and it gets the job done. And you could also, if you didn't use two street signs because you're a weirdo like me, you could use a, uh, a wooden, like a cutting board. And that would probably work even better. I'm trying to get the, get the camera. There we go. So... To use a blending board, I like to do is first you pick out all your colors and stick them in a uh, giant pile <laughs> over here. So I've got some cool grays. Like I said, I was going for like a uh, cocoon thing. So I've got grays, I've got browns. I wanted to have kind of the emerging butterfly. So I've got this cool like coral, which is a uh, dyed merino, and then some blue romney, and then of course the appropriate uh, sparkle. And, oh, here it is. Some really pretty, this is kind of a black pearl colored uh, bamboo. And so it's got kind of a different texture. With art bats, I like to, um, I like to do things that kind of all have different textures because then you see, like I said, when they come together, you've got like the sparkle, you've got the merino, there's all the kind of the shiny stuff's on the inside. So the bamboo and stuff's in there. So then when you're like spinning it this way, like a long draw method, all of the, it's, it's like a surprise, like all the presents, <laughs> all the cool inside is coming out this way. So what you do is all my, this is, uh, the spikes are all going that way. So you pull against the, the spikes and it's kind of like painting. So you just want to get a little bit, you don't want to overload the board and to pull it down. I like to kind of get a good base layer, but then leave some, you know, room for other colors. And like I said, if you have any questions or comments, uh, let me know. I will try to sporadically. Oh, let's see. What's the best wool to start with, with spinning? Um, I really like, uh, let's see. I have a video on that. You can do merino braids, which you can then pre-draft. This is merino, and it's pre-drafted conveniently into, um, kind of these long strips. And these are nice if you're learning to spin because it's already drafted. So, um, you know, you're not having to, you know, it's kind of the work's already half done for you. So then it's kind of a matter of like, you know, spinning <laughs> this ribbon in and then connecting, basically connecting 
one into the next. So like I said, there's another video on this channel. Um, I think it's called like beginning spinning tips and I talk about the dyed merino braids would be a good choice, but also just get, like I said, this is some just really basic uh, Coradel and uh, it's really pretty and it, it's kind of lofty. I started out spinning more worsted style on the merino braids and that's what my mom learned on too and I learned on. And like I said, if you get them dyed also because they come out in different colors, like you end up with a really cool result even though you weren't really like having to do too much. So that's what I would recommend. But yeah, check out that other video on uh, beginning spinning tips. And then this is, like I said, the bamboo. So I want to put some of that here so it's visible. And I just kind of like hold it and then pull against the teeth. And like I said, it's really, it's a lot like painting. That's what I like. You're like layering the different colors in here. And then you want to make sure you get enough contrast. You kind of want things that go without, uh, you know, being too matchy, or at least I do. is the uh, green and purple sparkle. I like sparkly stuff. Some people don't like sparkly stuff. I like sparkly stuff. And a little bit more brown, a little bit more gray, and maybe a little bit more of this bamboo. So now once you've got this, where's my brush? Oh, locate your brush that may or may not be hidden under all of your stuff. And this is just a dog brush <laughs> from the pet store. And uh, it's got, you see the similar like tongs there. And you're not so much like brushing it as uh, you just kind of want to, and like I said, I hold down on this end, just kind of push it in, just kind of like that because you're not really brushing it. At least I don't, I kind of do like that. And oh, see, you don't want to get too crazy or else that happens. It's pretty much just lining the fibers straight because roll eggs are good for um, woolen spinning, which is where you want the fibers to come out kind of in that tube. So that's pretty much all I'm doing here. And then the part where I'm actually like pulling it is actually more with the pegs. So what you do is you get the dowels and uh, you want to put it under the end where like I said the pegs are all going this way. So you want to put the dowels where you're rolling against the pegs. Like if you try to go this way it'll all snag in here. So you want to go where it's going to go against the pegs. You put the, I always kind of leave a tail, so you kind of put the tail down here over one peg. And you put this over that and then kind of roll your tail, you know, pinch these together. Hope you can see that. So I'm pinching them together, I think kind of like you would sushi. <laughs> and then I like to put my thumbs kind of here. And then you're pulling back. And this is where, like I said, the, the combing actually comes into play more when you're pulling back and kind of rolling. So you're pulling and rolling, kind of pulling and rolling pulling and rolling. And you see how the shiny stuff, like we know it's in there, it's in the middle, but like on this outside, it is very much like a cocoon where it's all rolled up nice and tight. And then I kind of like to, uh, you know, roll it that way. And then I like to take it and kind of smooth it with my hand. Just, you know, and you don't want to like rip it really tight, but uh, kind of smooth it with your hand to keep it all together. And then these may or may not be kind of tight. If they're kind of tight, you might want to kind of you know, you end up wiggling the stick sticks a bit. But the idea is you pull one stick this way, one stick that way, and it kind of, one of them will come out <laughs> first, and then you end up with kind of a little kebab. Looks like a meat kebab. And you, you know, just be gentle. It usually comes off one way easier than the other. And then there you go. It's a little roll leg. So it's all, they said if you wanted to spin this, you would start on this end right here and just grab this. And this is more advanced spinning. This would be like woolen spinning you get here and then you do like the long draw method, but it, it's really nice. So those, it's my little intro to roll eggs. I may uh, do more here soon, but if y'all wanna hang out, let's see how long have I been rambling? Oh, almost 10 minutes. That's uh, I think a record ramble for me on here.
So if you want, I did promise to do more on gears. So come with me through, through my house over here and uh, let me try to get the camera angle set up again so I can uh, do some gear spinning. This is my uh, Spinolution King B, and uh, what I want to show you here is it's got three different gears on the back. I find that the gears on the back make way more difference than the gears down here, which I'll show you these here in a second. And my Lewitt, which was the wheel I started on, and my Polywog, um, they also have three gears up here, so that seems to be a pretty standard. Like I said, this is a Scotch tension. The Lewitt was an Irish tension. It, it also had three gears, but it's, they spun on the actual bobbin. But anyhow, so that should be pretty standard, I'm guessing, with no matter what wheel you have. This is my tension block for the spin solution. So the general idea is that, and we'll start off, that I've got this on the biggest ratio here. And then down here, I just have it on what I feel like gives it the most power that I'm the most comfortable with. Let me get a little bit going. This is just some like scrap fiber. The idea is that the bigger the gear is up here, that that's gonna give you, basically this will spin fewer times per how many times the big wheel goes around. So let me get this going. And the reason that's important is because the fewer times that this, the flyer spins, the less twist is going to be getting in here at a time. Here, let me get this where you can see. There you go. Okay. So, um, like I said, this is on the biggest ratio. So if you want to spin, I started out spinning pretty big yarn, but I think it's hard for a lot of people. I think a lot of people actually spin thinner yarn easier than thicker yarn. But um, if you want to spin something really thick and fluffy, you want to put it on the biggest gear so you're getting less twist. And then, uh, so you're getting less twist in this. So you want to, and you feel it, you get just enough twist to where, you know, it's staying together and it's kind of the size. Hold on, this, I'm trying to get the camera there. You want to get it where the size is, uh, you know, the puffy size you want. I mean, you can really get, if you're doing thick and thin, like really big. There you go and you're just letting more fiber feed through. But then let's say you want it to be smaller. I'm gonna take it down one gear. And I like this one is the middle gear for kind of like DK worsted. And so that's gonna see how you've got more spin here. So that's gonna, honestly, I don't usually use the smallest gear. So the middle gear is usually the smallest one I use. And you can get, I mean, you can see it spinning a lot. You can get really thin, hope you can see that. This is is really thin um, just on that middle gear because you're getting a lot more rotation up here, but my feet are still going the same speed. But if you really are wanting to do lace weight or you've got some like really nice long fiber wool, or uh, if you're doing like cotton or flax or something with like a short staple length, because the shorter the fiber length, the more twist and the faster it's gonna have to be to go in here or else, um, you know, like I said, if it's short like cotton or flax, they've got short little fibers. If you're not getting enough twist, like fast twist in that, they're going to come apart, um, which isn't what you want. So with lace weight or like short fiber, I've got this on the smallest one now. I don't use the smallest one. And so you can tell on this one, I mean, it's really a different animal. When you put it on that smallest gear, my feet have really slowed down. It's a different treadle, but you can see how fast that's spinning. And I mean, this is a pretty, like I said, I'm not even sure what fiber this is. <laughs> I just grabbed this out of a scrap bag. But um, yeah, I mean, this is, that's, I've got a part there. I mean, it's like a thread. So, uh, you know, you got get that by, like I said, putting it on the smallest ratio. So I hope that helps. Like I said, I have another video on my uh, channel. And like I said, as far as, oops, sorry, what's down here? Like I said, this is the King Bee, so it's totally weird. Um, I've just got it on the biggest gear here, and you can. Sw I don't switch the the bottom out as much. I'm kind of a creature of habit, so uh, I like the bottom gears, <laughs> kind of like how they are, and uh, I just switch out the top. So I hope that's helpful. And um, I don't know. Does anybody have any questions for next week? Spinning or fiber or knitting or 
I don't know any other general questions for next week because if not it's just gonna be uh, <laughs> whatever is I'm working on which by then I will hopefully have uh, a lot more of my uh, fiber <laughs> for all of my projects so who knows what we we'll be spending next week but um, if you have any questions even if you're watching this later just uh, drop a comment on this video and I will uh, try to work it in next week like I did this week so I hope y'all are all having a good uh, a good Thursday and uh, you probably hear my kids are in the tub upstairs <laughs> I thank you, and I uh, should probably go make sure there's not water all over the place. So, y'all have a good one, and I will talk to you soon.